The Aurora Theater shooting five years ago changed how our state supports those dealing with a mental health crisis. Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski took an in-depth look at the program born out of this tragedy. If this image of this Aurora Theater wasn't etched in our minds, we might think it was any other theater. When it's a tragedy in the community that you were a part of, it has a different impact. Five years ago, what happened here during the midnight premiere of The Dark Knight Rises still haunts Bev Marquez. What will you never forget about that day and the days that followed? Just the, the deep grief. Feeling at a loss as a crisis professional in some ways to help people. Marquez now runs Colorado's 24-7 crisis hotline. When you call that number, it comes into here 24-7. It's okay, all right? Because we want to keep you safe and you're reaching out for help. A lifeline for help and resources from licensed counselors that didn't exist before the shooting. That is a big difference and wasn't available in a consistent and reliable way. It's not easy. Um, this mom has been through the crisis. At that time, it was terrifying. She asked us to hide her identity. It was very lonely. Sorry. For a reason that is quite revealing. Because as far as we've come, we still have a long way to go. About what it's like to have a son struggling with mental illness. I can't put my son in a situation to be bullied or to be made fun of or ridiculed. At age nine, her bright, outgoing son had plans to take his own life. We lost friends. We had family members start to turn on us. We had people accuse us of being bad parents. That was six years ago. Back then, she says they felt like they had nowhere to turn. It was just go to an emergency room, and that's our only hope. And even I felt like at that point, the emergency room didn't even really know what to do. Her son got through it, but this classroom silhouette says it all. I don't think any parent wants to admit that their child is in a mental health crisis. Last year, her now 15-year-old son relapsed, but this time it was different. What does that mean to you as a mom? Everything. Everything. Um, my son's life was in the balance. Colorado Crisis Services. Which brings us back to the crisis call center. Can you hear me okay? Where these counselors took her son's call, followed up, and gave him the tools he needed to get better. I know for some people in the moment that can be hard to make. It felt safer for us and for him as well. This call center, a mobile crisis team, 24-hour walk-in centers, and short-term respite care were all created in response to the Aurora Theater shooting. And I hate that something like that had to happen. Um, it's heartbreaking. But I so appreciate the strength of the individuals who've pushed for Colorado to really rally around people who are struggling. Three years after state lawmakers passed this bill to fund crisis services, it's helped more than half a million people. It was a gap in service. I think it means that the demand is, is very high. More than 300,000 calls have come into the crisis hotline. Colorado had come so far in five years and had given us a healthier approach to dealing with his crisis this last time. The truth is it shouldn't take a tragedy to make us understand the importance of mental health care. Well, things are better than they were. Andrew Romanoff with Mental Health Colorado says there are still gaps. We don't do a particularly good job in psychiatric beds. Um, we're not doing nearly enough uh, around prevention and early intervention. Um, we have one of the highest suicide rates in the nation. Because whether it's family, friends, or even strangers, mental illness touches us all. There's not one person who's going to go through life and never have mental health struggles. There's just not. All of these services are free, and they don't turn anyone away. The crisis number again is 844-493-TALK. Right now, the state spends about $25 million a year on these services. Sources are telling me that that funding should be safe, but you never know where cuts will be made. Any push for extra money for things like more psychiatric beds or counselors in schools would need sign-off from lawmakers. I'm Jennifer Kovaleski for Denver 7.